Al Friedman was the uh, producer of 21. He had done a couple of other quiz shows. Um, he had been a Marine during World War II in combat. Um, uh, he, he was, when I saw him, Al Friedman was a sexologist. Did he I define did, what that was? Uh, no, he did not, but he worked at Penthouse Magazine, and I got to go to the Penthouse offices on the West 60s in New York. And there wasn't anything about them that would distinguish Penthouse from anything else other than a couple of things on the wall that said he, was a, he had a degree in sexology. And I, I don't know what he, was, what he was expert at, but I really wasn't going to ask. Um, and we immediately liked each other. Al, Al had not talked to anybody about this. He was the only person to go to jail for lying to the grand jury. He did it to protect Charles Van Doren, and then they threw him under the bus for that. And he was prosecuted by a, another very nice man named Joe Stone, um, who was also living on the Upper West Side at that time. And Al, um, Al sort of never recovered from, he was sort of like a scared rabbit. He didn't really want to talk. And, but he trusted me for some reason, and I was going to tell his story. And he, um, he was very pleased when the book came out and got to tell the story. And he also gave me an autobiography, which I have sitting on a table over there. I was never able to do anything with. Um, and um, he also, um, once a year, would sort of get drunk and call me on the phone after this interview. And, and hi, Jeff, this is Alan. And, you're the greatest, I just, you did things, and, and it would just be this maudlin conversation. And I felt terrible for him, and after a while I stopped taking the, the calls. But one of the things that I did was, he was so troubled that, and I liked Joe Stone so much, I got the two of them together to have lunch. Joe was very interested in having lunch with Al, and Al was not interested in having lunch with Joe. But I convinced them to do that, and I have a recording of the lunch. I, I taped the whole thing. I thought it would make a good New Yorker piece. And um, the two of them sat down and it was a very warm, very friendly, very nice lunch and I think Al felt a lot better afterward. I remember Michael Stipe from REM was sitting at the next table and I kept thinking, well, yeah, that might be fun to be sitting there, but this is a lot more interesting than, 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 than that would be. And then Al was hurt terribly when Quiz Show came out, the movie, Robert Redford, because they used his real name and they turned him into a cartoonish character. And um, Herb Stemple also wasn't happy about it either. But Al was, was especially unhappy about it because he felt that they took all these liberties with his character and who he was. And I thought he had a good argument that they didn't change his name. It wasn't Al, but yet they used, you know, there it was, Al Friedman on stage, and he was humiliated. And I went on the air to a few shows. Um, I think Steve Ducey, you know, um, Donald Trump's best friend, they had me on a show in New Jersey, saying basically, you know, yeah, look, they have a right to take liberties with the story. They're making a movie. I get it. But when they're using somebody's real name and that person is still alive, that's, that's not fair. And Al was a good guy. You know, he, he was doing what basically they told him to do. You know, uh, let's make Charles Van Doren the hero. And as he said, that's the way all quiz shows were run pretty much in those days. And he was right. 